Tonight, eight more persons die from COVID-19 as the country records 164 new infections in the last 24 hours. Jamaica's travel ban on the United Kingdom that ended today, April 30, will not be extended. Still tonight, Medical Officer of Health for St. James, Dr. Tanik Bailey-Small, is urging persons to take the COVID-19 protocols seriously to help reduce the spread of the virus. Someone we know has died, has died from COVID-19 or has been severely affected by COVID-19. And so we need to take the measures and the steps that will allow us to move to another phase of the pandemic in terms of things getting better. And two women fatally shot, five others shot and injured in St. Catherine. Yesterday afternoon, sometime after 5 o'clock, gunmen opened fire on a bus of mourners who were leaving the Medarest Funeral Park. The gunfire resulted in the shooting of seven persons, two of whom perished. If anyone has any information that they believe can be of assistance to our investigations into this incident, we would ask that they would call Crime Stop at 311 or Police 119 Emergency. more persons have died from the coronavirus COVID-19. This as the island recorded 164 new infections in the last 24 hours. The latest figures increases the death toll now to 778 from 45,578 cases since the outbreak. Five of the deaths were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew, three females aged 56, 96 and 84 years, and two males aged 61 and 83. The three other deaths were of two males aged 42 and 92 years, and an 86-year-old female, all in Westmoreland. Of the new cases, 89 are females and 75 are males, ranging in age from 89 days to 96 years. The new cases were recorded in all parishes as follows. St. Catherine recorded 41 cases, Kingston and St. Andrew 34 cases, St. James 18, St. Mary 15, Manchester 12, St. Elizabeth 10, St. Anne 7 cases, Clarendon and Westmoreland recorded 6 cases each, Portland recorded five cases, Hanover four, while St. Thomas and Trelawney recorded three cases each. Meanwhile, 114 persons recovered from the virus within the last 24 hours, while 23,409 cases are currently classified as active. In other news tonight, Jamaica's travel ban on the United Kingdom, UK, that was slated to end today, April 30, will not be extended. Now, this means that the ban that was implemented as part of the measures under the Islands Disaster Risk Management Act was today lifted. Speaking on the significance of the lifting of the ban, Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett said, quote, On Saturday, May 1, Jamaica will reopen its borders to international visitors from the United Kingdom. This will enable the critical gateways of Heathrow and Gatwick airports to have transit for passengers coming through and who are fully compliant with health and safety protocols required for international travel." End quote. Minister Bartlett explained that Jamaica's position at this time is critical in relation to the opening up of the summer tourist season and, in fact, the importance of enabling the diaspora, particularly the strong British clientele that have always visited the island. The lifting of the band is also against the background of the improved vaccination program in the UK and the fact that pretty close to 50% of UK residents have received their second dose of the vaccinations. 
Since reopening its borders last June, Jamaica has welcomed approximately 1.5 million visitors under the island's robust health and safety protocols. Still making the news tonight, Medical Officer of Health for St. James, Dr. Tanique Bailey Small, is urging persons to take the COVID-19 protocols seriously as this will help in reducing the spread of the virus. The fact of the matter is every single person now has, if we've not been personally affected by COVID-19, someone we know has died, has died from COVID-19 or has been severely affected by COVID-19. And so we need to take the measures and the steps, not just taking the protocols in terms of wearing our masks, um, social distancing, etc., but taking the step that will allow us to move to another phase of the pandemic in terms of things getting better and vaccination is the way forward. Of course, we want to commend the persons who would have come out, who would have gotten their vaccines. And as we are approaching now the time for the second dose, to encourage the persons who would have received their first dose to get ready to receive their second dose because the first dose provides some amount of protection, but we really need a second dose to provide maximal, maximum protection. In addition to that, I know there are persons who have not yet received their would not have not yet received their first dose and may be a little hesitant but certainly it is important it is imperative that we come forward and we receive our vaccination dr bailey small also pointed out that vaccination is a means of not just protecting oneself but also those around us the fact of the matter is once we're vaccinated it's not just about protecting yourself but it's also protecting those around us and of course you know our families our friends are close to us and so we have to do whatever it is that we can to protect them as well as protecting ourselves so the reality of it is that I don't think anyone can say okay if I do contract COVID-19 my symptoms will be mild or I will have no symptoms at all we cannot say we do not know what, old, what the outcome will be or what the impact will be on our system from getting COVID-19. So it is imperative that we protect ourselves. We understand that yes, having gotten the vaccine, it may not necessarily prevent us from getting COVID-19, but certainly it, it, it helps to protect again the severe form of the disease and death. And so this is very, very critical. So as we go forward, as we continue to vaccinate, let us go forward, let us reach out, let us go. It's the, it's the vaccines are available. Uh, once we're in the, the approved categories, so go and get our vaccines done so that we can move towards um, protecting Jamaica. And of course, we can move back to some form of normalcy. On her part, Medical Officer for St. James, Dr. Francine Phillips Kelly, outlined the parish's ongoing COVID-19 vaccination program. Prior to the Blitz, we had, and even in the Blitz, we had been making centers available closer to, especially the more rural communities. And we would have seen some persons taking advantage of that. In respect of going into homes, that's not something that we are going to be able to do, but all of what we do with respect to vaccine is going to be dependent on our supply. As we speak today, we're actually vaccinating in our St. James Type 5 Health Center. Vaccination is being done today, and we are continuing to mobilize the persons who are 60 and over to come in and have their vaccinations done. We can only encourage individuals to accept the vaccine, but it must be understood that accepting the vaccine does not mean that one will not contract the virus. It is being anticipated that with the virus on board, having had the vaccine, then the course will not be as detrimental and, and, and as deleterious as if there was no vaccine on board. So it's ongoing education that we have to do for our people so that persons can be more willing to accept the vaccine. 
Dr. Phillips Kelly explained the similarities in the symptoms of COVID-19 and dengue fever. Both conditions are caused by a virus. The presentation of the patient is quite similar. So we would have heard of persons with COVID-19 having fevers and pains. This is something that we also see in dengue fever and therefore the clinician who is seeing the particular patient should always have a high index of suspicion of one or other, not because there is COVID-19 that is an epidemic now means that there is no dengue cases. So, so it always is that, has to be that there is a high index of suspicion and the clinician assess the patient accordingly so that we can have the best outcome. Continuing with the news tonight, a former operations manager at the National Commercial Bank, NCB, accused of stealing tens of millions of dollars from the institution over a three-year period, pleaded guilty in the home circuit court yesterday. 52-year-old Andrea Gordon of a Kingston address was charged last June with larceny as a servant after the bank uncovered the multi-million dollar fraud. She was remanded when she appeared before Justice Lorna Shelley Williams yesterday and is to be sentenced on May 31. Reports coming into our news center are that between January 2017 and May 2020, Gordon transferred over 35 million Jamaican dollars from the bank to her personal accounts. An investigation was launched by members of the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Branch, CTOC, which led to Gordon's arrest. Gordon had been employed to NCB for 30 years. She pleaded guilty to 13 counts of larceny as a servant. She also pleaded guilty to breaches of the Proceeds of Crime Act and to money laundering. Still making the news tonight, 44-year-old Latoya Gordon, a sales representative of Bayshore Park in Kingston 17, has been reported as missing since April 28. She is of brown complexion, medium build, and is approximately 5 feet 3 inches tall. Reports from the Harborview Police coming into our news center tonight are that Gordon was last seen at home at approximately 10.30 a.m., wearing a white blouse, black pants, and a pair of black shoes. She has not been heard from since. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Latoya Gordon is being asked to contact the Harborview Police at 876-928-6001, Police Emergency 119, or the nearest police station. In the meantime, the police are seeking the public's assistance to locate 57-year-old Lloyd Grant, a farmer of Blythe District, Kidson Town, St. Catherine. He has been missing since April 9. He is of brown complexion, slim build, and approximately 5 feet 8 inches tall. Reports from the Spanish Town Police coming into our news center are that Grant was last seen at his home at approximately 10 a.m. and has not been heard from since. His mode of dress at the time he went missing is unknown. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Lloyd Grant is being asked to contact the Spanish Town Police at 876-984-2305, Police Emergency 119 or the nearest police station. We go to news from St. Catherine now as detectives assigned to the Waterford Police Station are seeking the public's assistance to locate a person of interest in relation to the murder of 28-year-old John Ross Morgan, a security guard of a Waterford address. Now the incident occurred at approximately 6.50 p.m. on April 27 in the Waterford community. The police believe that Wayne Hutchinson, whose last known address is Myrtle Way in Portmore, can assist them with their investigations. Hutchinson is being asked to report to the Portmore police immediately. In the meantime, lawmen are appealing to anyone with information 
that can assist them with their investigations to contact the Portmore Police at 876-949-8422, Police Emergency 119 or the nearest police station. In other news tonight, the two women that were killed in yesterday's shooting at St. John's Road have been identified. They are Tracy Ann Sr., otherwise called Mollo, of Parade Gardens, Kingston, and Onika Carter, aged 28, of George's Lane in Kingston. Five other persons were injured, including a 40-year-old woman who received injuries to her head and face, a two-year-old boy who received injuries to his abdomen, and a 45-year-old woman who received injuries to her finger. They are all from George's Lane. Also injured were a 17-year-old female from Rum Lane who received injuries to her right shoulder and a 17-year-old male from George's Lane who received injuries to his back. Reports coming into our news center are that at approximately 5.30 p.m. yesterday, the victims went to the funeral service of Troy Terrelong, otherwise called Weed Seed, who was fatally shot on January 28. The victims, along with other persons, were all seated in a coaster bus at Meadowrest Memorial Gardens in Spanish Town when they were pounced upon by several armed men who opened gunfire at the bus. The injured victims were rushed to the Spanish Town Hospital by the police, where Senior and Carter were pronounced dead. The police are asking anyone with information that can assist them in their investigations to call Crime Stop 311 or Police Emergency 119. Yesterday afternoon, sometime after 5 o'clock, gunmen opened fire on a bus of mourners who were leaving the Medarest Funeral Park. The gunfire resulted in the shooting of seven persons, two of whom perished. The dead are Tracy Ann Sr. of Parade Gardens and Onika Carter of George's Lane. Among the injured is a two-year-old infant as well as as well as two 17-year-old high school students. If anyone has any information that they believe can be of assistance to our investigations into this incident, we would ask that they would call Crime Stop at 311 or Police 119 Emergency. Still making the news tonight, the Criminal Justice Suppression of Criminal Organizations Amendment Act 2021 commonly called the anti-gang legislation, was tabled in the House of Representatives on April 28. Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang said the legislation will provide an additional game-changing tool to the security forces in combating criminal gangs. Now, Dr. Chang said, quote, it builds an assault on criminal gangs and a reminder to the people of Jamaica that this government is and will continue to put in place all the necessary measures to undermine the work of criminals, end quote. The amendments specify additional offenses for activities in which criminal organizations are engaged, increase the number of offenses under the Act, expand the list of aggravating factors to be considered when sentencing an individual convicted of certain offenses under the Act and improve the trial procedure in order to protect the identity of witnesses for connected matters. The report of the Joint Select Committee to review the Criminal Justice Suppression of Criminal Organizations Act 2014 was adopted in the House of Representatives in May 2020. Dr. Chang said that the deliberations and consultations within the Joint Select Committee were comprehensive and engaged a broad set of stakeholders. Dr. Chang further stated that the bill signifies another significant step in strengthening the country's legislative framework for national security. And those are some of the stories making news. We will return with other stories as the Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC, has granted an extension for the submission of SBAs for some students in Jamaica 
who will sit the June to July 2021 CSEC examinations. And the tourism room capacity in Hanover is to increase with the commencement of construction work on phase one of the U.S. $500 million five-star Grand Luxury Princess Hotels and Resorts at Industry Cove in Green Island. But first, we'll go to a break and then we'll join Christopher Scott with the very latest in sports. 